and we will move to the first debate of the evening, which the Whips have agreed will be on Executive Report Number 2, Paragraph 12, and this is dealing with Nine Elms. Can I now call on, upon the Leader to formally move the reception of this report? Right, uh, Strategic Planning and Transportation Overview and Scrutiny Com Committee, Councillor Cousins, if you would like to lead the speakers. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, just in introducing this paper, and it is a delight to be able to introduce this uh, paragraph to the Council, uh, I'd, I'd like to take it into the, the wider aspiration agenda for Wandsworth uh, and for Battersea in particular. Uh, while this paper deals with the technicalities of the Joint Coordination Unit, the governance structure, the membership of that, how it will work, the, uh, if you get into the uh, individual paper, uh, the, the original paper, it deals with the flow chart and the, uh, the way that people will go through, either businesses or, or candidates will go through the process to hopefully gain employment at the end. Um, it's all, I suspect, slightly meaningless to the people that this will be affected. Uh, it's meaningless to the people who are looking for jobs, uh, who are living on the estates in Battersea, uh, and who need to um, find work. Um, one of the reasons I suspect it's meaningless is that uh, last Thursday, London citizens were outside the US Embassy singing the Star Spangled Banner and demanding uh, that local people get employment through the development there. Now, I suspect it may be that they've not been reading uh, the council agenda as closely as possibly they should be doing uh, and recognising that actually these structures are already being put in place and these structures already have the support of uh, Wandsworth Council, Lambeth Council and also the developers there. Uh, but I also think it's evidence that we need to demonstrate to individuals, we need to demonstrate to people that we are serious about Nine Elms just being another, not just being rather, uh, an anonymous uh, development on a river. Uh, built there to uh, shine, shine along the river and provide the boats with some glass and steel to look at. Uh, but in fact, to demonstrate through example that this is something that is going to benefit uh, not just the residents of, uh, the immediate residents of Wandsworth around there on the estates, but also the whole of Wandsworth, the whole of Lambeth, and indeed the whole of London. If I can bring it down perhaps to the borough level, in Wandsworth we have just launched, or are in the process of launching, our job brokerage scheme, which... Uh, Having struggled to come up with a name, we seem to be settling on work match, subject to approval. This isn't even up and running yet. We haven't employed all the staff. There are still people coming on stream on a day-by-day -day basis, and I think it's not even expected to be fully staffed until the end of next month. It doesn't even have an office. Uh, the office uh, premises that we identified in Lavender Hill, near to Clapham Junction, so it's near to the people we're seeking to help. Uh, haven't been fully refurbished, haven't been fully decorated. So they're operating from temporary premises, they're operating without a full complement of staff, and yet it is uh, with great pleasure, I can say, we've actually, subject to the formalities that are always involved in this, secured the first job for a uh, tenant, uh, for a resident uh, from one of our council estates. We've got more jobs coming, and in coming days, uh, a couple of organisations have already approached us with recruitment uh, needs, uh, which we hope to be able to fill. So this is a, a process that I think has already been proven to work and has been proven to work where it has been put in place and been in operation for a number of years across London, uh, time and time again. And we need to broaden it out not just beyond the uh, aspiration agenda here for, for Wandsworth uh, and for the residents of Wandsworth, but also for the businesses. Uh, immediately before this, I was in Battersea Power Station. Uh, always a delight to be there, whether it's to see uh, a groundbreaking or as it was today, to see one of our regular supply chain events where we're uh, introducing businesses to the contractors, introducing businesses to the developers and helping them identify the opportunities that will exist and already exist for them to do work in the Nine Elms development, uh, which not only helps their bottom line, but also will create further employment for local residents, uh, whether it be from the local estates or from the wider Wandsworth community. I'm totally excited that we're moving so rapidly on this and we are soon going to be able to provide uh, example after example of example after example, where we've helped our tenants, we've helped our unemployed youths, uh, we've helped our residents find jobs in one of the most exciting opportunities that London has seen uh, since the Olympics and probably the last exciting opportunity central London will see uh, in most of our lifetimes. Uh, I'm terribly excited that um, to have been part of that and it's been an enormous privilege to have been part of that and I hope the council will support me, uh, support this paragraph uh, and join me in that excitement because what's good for the residents of Wandsworth and what's good for the uh, businesses of Wandsworth is good not only for, the Wandsworth as a, uh, for Wandsworth as a whole but for the whole of London and the whole of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cousins. 
I have Councillor Carpenter speaking next. Madam Mayor, may I start by congratulating you on your election and wishing you a successful year as Mayor of Wandsworth. Let me first make it clear that we on this side of the chamber are entirely supportive of the Council's efforts to ensure that the development of Nine Elms results in employment and of apprenticeship opportunities for Wandsworth residents during the construction phase and provides long-term employment opportunities for Wandsworth residents in the operational phase of the development. I'm going to provide an overview of the debate while Councillor Hogg will concentrate on some of the planning and housing issues raised by the Nine Elms development and Councillor Belton will set it in its historical context. Let me repeat, one, what Wandsworth is doing in Nine Elms is good but as we know from education, good is not good enough. We have to aspire to be outstanding. Opportunities like Nine Elms only come along once in a generation. It's our job as Wandsworth councillors to ensure that we make the absolute best of this opportunity for the residents of Wandsworth that we represent. There are three areas where I believe we are selling the residents of Wandsworth short. Infrastructure, housing and employment. And then there are the 30 wasted Tory years when no development occurred on these sites at all at a cumulative cost of hundreds of millions of lost business rates and council tax. Now we all agree that a high intensity development is not viable without underground access to the site. But the Northern Line spur to Battersea Power Station only solves half the problem. Without connectivity through to Clapham Junction, there will not be the capacity to get the required volume of people both into and out of the development area. Now I know the council supports the eventual extension of the Northern Line to Clapham Junction, but they reserve this until Crossrail 2 in the 2030s. The connection will be needed by 2020 when the bulk of the development will be completed. Even the proposed Nine Elms station is inadequate, all for the sake of an additional £5 million investment up front. And this is the nub of the problem. By trying to fund the infrastructure up front through very high community infrastructure levies, the council has compromised both the infrastructure and the quality of the developments that are delivered. Major infrastructure projects have to be funded long term out of the benefits they bring to the community. The Victoria Line has paid for itself several times over through the increase in property values and consequent increases in business rates and council tax along its route. Which brings me to housing. Wandsworth is seeking 15% affordable housing within the Nine Elms development, while Lambeth is seeking 40%. I would argue that any community in which only 15% of its housing was affordable was not sustainable, and so contrary to basic planning policies. Again, the Tories are selling Wandsworth residents short. Where are the workers who are going to be needed to support the Nine Elms development going to live? Not in Wandsworth. I could go into detail about how Wandsworth has got its sums wrong on affordable housing, and I've done that at Strategic Planning and Transportation. But basically, Wandsworth has based its calculations on the bottom of the housing market, while Lambeth has based theirs on the top of the market. The alacrity with which the Wandsworth planning permissions in Nine Elms are being developed in the midst of a recession is proof of this miscalculation. A miscalculation for which the residents of Wandsworth will suffer for the next 50 years. While the Prime Minister of Malaysia and Mr Luxury Yacht from China laugh all the way to their offshore banks. So finally employment. The employment initiatives we are debating today are welcome. But where is the commitment to the London living wage? If the Olympic site could afford to pay the London living wage, so can Nine Elms. There is no point in generating employment for Wandsworth residents if it is poverty employment, which makes them claim in-work in benefits. In these circumstances, the taxpayer is effectively subsidising foreign property developers. Madam Mayor, in infrastructure, in housing and in wages, Wandsworth Tories have sold Wandsworth residents short. They have been literally sold down the river. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dunn. Councillor Dunn. Mr Mayor, 
May I add my congratulations to Councillor Carpenters. Um, I'm delighted to speak in this debate <clears throat> because I think the creation of this joint coordination unit to help broker jobs for Wandsworth residents is very, very good news indeed. And I, I see things slightly differently to Councillor Carpenter. Um, I mean, I want to start by talking about optimism because I see this as a tremendous opportunity. Councillor Cousins touched on this, but I don't think we all realise quite how extraordinarily fantastic it is. Now, I heard a report on the radio this morning about optimism. I don't know if any of you were listening to Radio 4. Um, but people who are optimistic live seven years longer on average than those who are Eeyores. <laughs> now, there are those people who really do think, because of the recession and the deficit, that we are all really doomed. Now, luckily, I am a natural optimist, and I don't believe that. Um, I mean, I know that times are tough, but if you look at the current state of affairs, this government has brought down the deficit by a third. A million new jobs in the private sector have been created, yet there is good news out there. And then in Wandsworth, we have got Battersea and Nine Elms. Now, the picture in Wandsworth is very different to the natural, na national picture. I mean, we are different in Wandsworth. So if you take youth unemployment, and I'm sure a lot of you have looked at it, the figure is about 10%. In Wandsworth, our youth unemployment, that's 16 to 24 year olds, is actually 4.8%. So it's much, much lower. But this brings me back to Battersea and Nine Elms itself, because this is such an extraordinary opportunity for us all to help our residents, but particularly our younger residents, to get jobs. I mean, after the Olympic Park, Battersea Nine Elms is the biggest construction site, not just in London, but in the country. I mean, it is enormous. It's 195 hectares of central London. Um, I've got a whole load of figures here because I wanted to remind myself just how big it all is. I mean, more than a billion is being spent on the infrastructure. I mean, largely that's the two tube stations that Councillor Carpenter referred to, but um, there, there is obviously more besides. There's going to be a brand new town centre around Battersea Power Station itself. There's going to be a linear park. Um, three kilometres of the riverside, the riverbank, will be developed, which were formerly just brownfield site, industrial wasteland, more or less. We've got the new American embassy that I know we all know about, but that's going to be opening in 2017, so it's really just down the road. Um, then the power station... Um, is now going to be developed. Now, I know there are eels in the room who are going to go tut, 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 but I do think it's massively significant that the Malaysian Prime Minister came to London last week to support SP Setia, and there we had both Prime Ministers with the Mayor of London. You know, this sends a message out to business and the wider community that this is going to happen. The first spade has gone into the ground. There are going to be 16,000 new homes and 30,000 new residents. I mean, this is massive. Um, and, of course, jobs, 25,000 new jobs. Now, there are five sites that are already under construction. But this is a complicated picture because there are about, I counted up, 23 um, developments or developers within the Battersea Nine Arms area. Five have already started construction, um, something like 16 have planning permission. But this is really why we need this brokerage service, because the only way to make it work, and I'm thinking again of our Wandsworth residents and our young people, is if we have this central point, so that we have all these different employers coming in from one direction, and our local residents applying for jobs from the other, because we need to have this coordination, otherwise it's not going to work very effectively. Now, there are two more points I'd like to make. Um, one is one that Councillor Cousins has already make, made, but I'd like to reiterate it, which is there are a whole series of ongoing events around Battersea Nine Elms. There are events to support businesses in gaining contracts. There are events to tell residents about Battersea Nine Elms and what it will mean. If you haven't been to any of these, please do attend. It doesn't matter which part of the borough you live in. It's relevant for all of us. I mean, I don't sit on this specific committee planning and strategic transportation, but I'm completely um, obsessed with making sure that my local residents in Bedford Ward know about this. And it is our, I think it's incumbent on us as local councillors and representatives of our local 
residents, that we make sure that we spread the word. You know, let's not just leave it up to somebody else. Let's make sure that through our own networks and those meetings, local meetings that we attend, those people that we're in touch with, right across Wandsworth, that we put that message out and we make sure that people know. Councillor Hogg. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and welcome to the job also. Um, <clears throat> as Councillor Carpenter has said, uh, we remain supportive of the Nine Elms developments and the overall master plan. Um, I think many of the benefits of the scheme have been laid out by Councillor Cousins and Dunn, and I agree uh, it, it's part of all of our roles now to communicate that, particularly to the hardest to reach residents. And I think the leader has spoken well also about a sort of Olympic effect radiating out from Nine Elms and affecting the whole borough. Um, but to avoid the unseemly appearance of too much agreement, I'd like to focus on just three areas where I think the potential, areas, the potential benefits of Nine Elms might be in danger of being slightly oversold. Um, and that's apprenticeships, affordable housing, and preserving Battersea Power Station. Um, apprentice popular buzzword now, um, but as one older gentleman who actually had been apprenticed in his youth forcefully pointed out to me, it used to be several years, uh, you know, a couple of times a week at night school, you were basically indentured, you know, if you dropped out, you were into the army or down the pit, and if you succeeded, you might be given, you know, some of the boss's tools or a share in the business, and that's not the case today. There's a staggering 11,775 apprenticeship qualifications eligible for public funding, and they obviously vary in quality. And young people have spoken about the fear of being, you know, just dropped after a year when the company can get someone else who will also be on those low wages. So we have to make sure we're actually preparing young men and women for a trade, not just ticking a box. Um, and I agree the job brokerage scheme uh, is an absolutely fantastic scheme that can help match uh, the skills with the roles. Um, on affordable housing, um, at the last count, I think about... Um, 11,000 of the nearly 17,000 homes that we'll have in Nine Elms had consent um, and only 8% of those were affordable for local people to rent socially. Now a further 7% were available for intermediate but you know intermediate's rather a movable target. The last person I spoke to who lived in intermediate housing was a practicing barrister and I don't think that's quite what that um, housing was intended for. Um, the chair of the Battersea Power Station Development Company was asked recently about um, affordable housing by the Evening Standard. Uh, he said, we were allowed to put the affordable homes into phase five. When the journalist asked, well, when's phase five due? He replied, 2026, I think. These responsibilities should not be deferred or be denied. Nine Elms should be a mixed integrated community, just as we should work to make the Savona and Patmore estates mixed integrated communities. Um, it was very good to see the leader this week breaking ground um, at the Bassi Power Station with the Prime Minister of Malaysia, um, who I didn't know until earlier was Battersea born and bred, um, which is good news. And also present was um, David Cameron. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> um, Mr. Cameron's a local sort of property investment sort of booster. Um, but unfortunately, he's likely to be disappointed because on his salary, of £142,500, uh, he couldn't qualify for a mortgage for a two-bedroom property in the power station because they start at £613,000. So, as I say, affordability becomes a relative term. And finally, there's the myth that we're preserving the views of the power station. Um, and I think it's a real shame that the view that everyone knows, which is tens of thousands of commuters every morning going to and from Victoria Station, you know, will just become a couple of hundred yards, a, a sort of canyon of slab blocks of uh, flats on either side. And unless you're fortunate enough to have a boat on the Thames or a helicopter, most of the views um, that we all enjoy of the power station um, will have vanished, which I think would be a real shame. So, uh, of course, we remain broadly supportive, but on affordable housing, apprenticeships and restoring uh, the power station, they're very positive goals, but I'm not sure any have been fulfilled. Um, but I would just emphasize to conclude, there's, there's already an informed civic conversation about Nine Elms, which I would inform all members to heed. Uh, it does combine passion with principle, um, but I, I agree with the cabinet member, it's about the art of the possible. But I think if you ask local people, they want an open, diverse, cultural, thriving Nine Elms. And personally, I don't believe the task of determining 
our common fate belongs to property developers, bureaucrats, or angry protesters. Uh, it's up to us and our purposeful collective action. So I'd urge all the members here, and in particular the leader and the cabinet member, uh, to continue their hard work uh, for the public interest in Nine Elms. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> Councillor Tom. Uh, Madam Mayor, um, as we're in the mood for congratulating people, may I urge Council to congratulate my fellow Scot, Andy Murray, on his magnificent <laughs> We, We Scots in South West London do like to please. Uh, I'm delighted we had had reference, of course, to the 4th of July, in the sense that we had uh, the leader of the Council, the Prime Minister, and the three Malaysian of, uh, owners meeting together to actually do the groundbreaking at Battersea Power Station. And I always thought, although we've seen, obviously, the uh, Nine Elms underway, I think that the power station itself, that commitment, is the crucial element in it, the building block, if you know, if you like, that now takes it well forward. Um, some of you will remember that uh, when I was mayor some four years ago, um, I saw the fact that, as a former diplomat, that the diplomats in London spent all the time shuttling to and fro uh, Kensington, Chelsea, to Westminster. And so, therefore, I organized, along with the Economic Development Office, a presentation. And we did this big presentation in Battersea Power Station, and all the, a fairly good selection of diplomats turned up, including the Americans. And you might say the rest is history. But, in fact, it's not, because the Dutch are coming as well. And I must say, I'd like to see that encouraged, because I'd love to see an embassy quarter the, mem the point being that the embassies will either rent or buy property and put people in it. And I think that's a crucial point for the development of, of, of the regeneration. Um, there's not much that I agree with on Councillor Belton, in fact. As Councillor Belton moves inexorably from you know, being a local nuisance to local treasure, um, I just wonder, there is one thing I do agree with him, and that is the crucial point of occupation of the properties. And it was interesting to see that Rob Pinknell in the Sunday Times, when asked about the 866 flats, how many of them were owned by British, he couldn't say. So I do think it's hugely important that, the, uh, that we do get investors, of course, whether Russian or Chinese or whoever, but we do want to see people actually living in these apartments. And with reference to the Chinese, you may have seen the extraordinary reference to the fact that they want to take over number one, Nine Elms Lane, and build a skyscraper one mile high. Well, I just simply hope that the, perhaps the coordination board, the local planners, will look at that extremely carefully. Um, I can tell you a story. When the Russians tried to extend their embassy in Kensington and put on an extra couple of stories, the Kensington Chelsea uh, Council refused to let them do that. So the Foreign Office uh, were met by the Russians, and the Russians said, surely you can do something about it. You're the British government. Can't you do something with these people, you know? Lean on them, intervene, shoot them, whatever. <laughs> and the answer was that the Kensington Chelsea Council stood firm, and the Russians were unable to make their uh, extension. And so I do hope that our local planners, when this Chinese option comes along, will stand firm. So looking at the whole development of the Nine Elms, I think it is absolutely crucial that we ensure that it's for the benefit of the borough. Um, we've had talk about it, but in, in, in essence, what we're trying to do is to ensure that as it develops, it is our citizens, our residents, who get the opportunities. So I welcome this, uh, if you like, bureaucratic infrastructure that's being put forward to match the actual infrastructure. But I think that it is crucial that it, is, it sets itself out clearly and precisely. And I believe that in this case, it is well on the way to doing so. And I commend this proposal to the Council. Mr. Mayor. Pardon? Um, after, I think it's Councillor Belton, and then you may speak, and then the leader. Would, would, would you like... Madam Mayor, um, can I first of all say to the Councillor Dunn 
that uh, I don't think personally I am an Eeyore, even if she might think I am later. I still look forward to the day when uh, my golf score is actually lower than my age, which means I've got to live to be very, very old indeed. So I'm, I'm still an optimist uh, in all kinds of ways. Uh, and I obviously support... Uh, could you um, um, point of personal explanation. Um, I can direct Councillor Belton to um, a programme that's being shown on Horizon this evening, which will show you how to increase your levels of optimism and live that extra seven years. Thank you, Councillor Dunn, for those few words. Councillor Bell. Well, my point is that I am quite an optimist. Actually, that's what I meant. But uh, perhaps uh, Councillor Dunn didn't understand that. Can I say this is a very difficult debate for me. I'm not very keen on love-a-thons where we're all in total agreement with each other. Um, they seem to be fairly pointless. Um, I am totally in favour of the jobs brokerage, which I think is great, and obviously the development happening is, is something. But I, so I didn't know where I was going to go, and I'm sorry, I'm certainly not going into the history, uh, because I've bored people with that too many times, including myself. Um, it would be nice to get rid of it. Um, but I do think Councillor Tom helped me out a bit. In his own little way, he was saying um, he'd like to make sure it's for the good of the people of Wandsworth. Well, what do you think? I mean, from what I understood, the first 600 sales were um, 300 in Kuala Lumpur and 300 here. Um, the 300 here were no doubt not many Latchmere residents. Um, I can't exactly guess where they were from, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they're all involved in the city one way or another. What I'm rather afraid of is that we're seeing a triumph of mammon, um, and that's what it is and what it's going to look like. Uh, Councillor Hogg talked about the canyons uh, alongside the railway line. As I say, Councillor Tom was concerned about just how many locals will be involved. I don't think any of us believe that many locals will be involved, will it? Will they? It is all the locals I know and talk to don't like the scale um, of the developments. And I, although I value quite a bit the planning officers and the planning committee, I don't think they've been able to stand up to the kind of Chinese pressure you're talking about. We've had, uh, uh, we've had policies and objectives about um, high rise and affordability, which we've endlessly put to one side, uh, endlessly put to one side because of you know, so-called viability. And the only viability comes indeed from big money. So what this is actually being for, and perhaps it's right that a, a major um, commercial market centre like London needs somewhere that is Frankfurt, New York, Hong Kong, uh, and other places rolled into one. Um, I imagine that most of the people there will have most to do with the city and Mayfair casinos, uh, one way or another. They won't be too many of my constituents or indeed your constituents. So I do hope the brokerage works so that at least the job side works out well. That's really important if it happens and great if it does. But I just say to the planners, and I include myself in that as a member of uh, the committees, um, that we're developing a kind of place well, let me put it another way. How many people would prefer to go to Dubai for their holiday rather than uh, to the Spanish or French Riviera? How many people would prefer to go to Doha rather than St. Ives? Now, I know people who do, but it's not my kind of city, and I suspect it's not the kind of city that uh, most Londoners would go for. And so I do hope, and as far as we can, we make sure there's a little bit more variation in whatever planning is left. Um, I don't want yet more shopping malls that won't be used when we're all doing internet shopping. I don't want yet more blocks of flats that are uh, a mile high, did you say, uh, and go to millionaires from anywhere at all. I want a place that is real and has life. I remember walking down the, the Thames with, uh, would you believe, Councillor Lister some time ago, and I was going past Gargoyle Wharf and those other places, 
and saying, what a dead place this has become. It's like nothing that's behind it. It's not even like Wandsworth High Street. It's certainly not like Clapham Junction or Putney. It's uh, these lifeless blocks where half of them are empty much of the time. And with the pubs, the one or two that are there, having great pictures of people sitting in there drinking because there's actually no one in there. Um, so I what, hope that we can avoid that kind of uh, development, and I think we've got some way to go yet to do that, I fear, for a rather soulless giant city. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Heaster. Uh, colleagues on the other side, I feel compelled to... I mean, I've been here too long, you might say, but I certainly recall when Councillor Belton was chairman of the planning committee, uh, the number of planning gains that he sought in any of the large developments, which resulted in developments not taking place and the sites laying sterile for many years. And although Councillor Carpenter is right to always stimulate us, to try and encourage us to do that little bit more, I have no problems with that. I'm all for it. This is a great moment for this borough. And I suppose if you sound like an eel and you look like an eel, there's only one thing you can be. And in the debate we've had, I think members opposite have acted just like eel because this is a time when we should all be rowing together and welcoming the embracing the actual movement taking place in that derelict site that's been derelict for over 30 years has been an eyesore um, for, 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 you know, for generations. Now, the jobs that are being created there are huge. The housing that's being created is all huge. And what we've got there at the moment is nothing. There's a few industrial jobs, but the site there is almost barren. It's embarrassing that it's been empty for so long. I'm embarrassed it's been empty so long. And now we've got the opportunity of seeing that entire site can, in conjunction with the London Borough of, of, of Lambeth, with their sites uh, further along the river as well. So really creating something very, very impressive, not just for us, not just for our future generations here in Wandsworth, but actually for, for London as a whole. And there's been a bit of carping about what's going to happen for adjacent areas and uh, employment and yet there's also been some very interesting comments about the imaginative brokerage that's taking place there something that was was part of the planning um, conditions many years ago this council was brave enough to insist that that was one of the big things that had to happen and it is happening it will happen and so those eels on the other side don't worry about it Let's get on with it. Let's not delay in any way, shape or form the development of this area because it's to our benefit as a borough and to London as a whole. Thank you, Councillor. The Mayor, I think... <laughs> Councillor Belton. So, so described. Um, can I say, first of all, I've had enough of Councillor Heaster rewriting history to be the way he wants it. It wasn't like that at all. He knows perfectly well it wasn't like that. There were plenty of developments when, when as it happens, I was planning to him, but it was a rather different economic and financial world. But can I just recall that he was chair of the planning committee for about the first four years when nothing happened and turned down and objected to every positive proposal that came from the Labour side. You're not so good yourself at it, Councillor East. Councillor Govindia, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think um, I'd sort of Councillor Carpenter's um, praise is sort of usually very sour. He, he doesn't um, do justice to himself because I'm sure that uh, in his personal life he had negotiations with foreign businesses and was actually quite welcoming and quite warm towards him, towards them, rather than uh, sort of uh, dismissive and sneering about uh, our recent foreign guests and our foreign investment we are attracting. I think he also fails to understand the so-called lost 30 years of Batsy Power Station, that it wasn't, as I said earlier, this council, 
It wasn't the lack of planning that stopped the regeneration of that site. But it's also, he forgets, that his party in the past opposed a number of schemes for the power station and opposed them vehemently. I think he also forgets that... Sorry, Madam Mayor, may I, again, can the leader point to one that we opposed because he knows perfectly well that I supported and I was planning speaker or leader all the time. Not one did we oppose and as you know Brian Barnes used to love to taunt me about it. He knows that perfectly well. We didn't oppose any of them. I said the Labour Party and Mr. Mr. Oh. Mayor I wasn't sure that Councillor Belton personified the entirety of Labour Party but perhaps he does. Uh, well, I think he, you might watch out that he probably does it now. Um, well, I, yes, yes. You go abroad back and take, take, and take more knives. I'd say, Mr. Mayor, I think what is incredible also that this reference to Northern Line extension that we are not uh, pushing for at a Clapham Junction link. Council Carpenters again failed to remember what this council's avowed aim is to get the Northern Line to move to Clapham Junction long before Crossrail 2 was announced. We had said that that's where Northern Line's natural ending should be. And that's why, in fact, in the design of the Northern Line scheme, there is an overrun which would make the, that connection possible when the money is right. There is no credit for the effort this council's made in actually securing the financial deal that will deliver the Northern Line. There is no credit and no understanding that this council has worked hard to deliver the key ingredient to unlocking the site, which is a mass transport transit link with the rest of the London underground. The talk of the 15% mocking the 15% affordable housing, well again no understanding that the only way you can finance the Northern Line is through actually making sure that the more money goes to the building the Northern Line and less money goes to other other uh, infrastructure wants in the area, therefore you get the first key ingredient to unlocking the site in place. And of course, you know, we have promised 15% and we've delivered 15%. Lambeth have promised 40% and delivered about 25%. And in fact, that is on a much smaller area. So, so no, so don't, don't quote their 40% as being a great aim. And again, their, 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 their sites are different from ours which is perhaps the reason why they are managing to do what they do. And yet the most important thing is the amount of money they're putting into Northern Line is virtually zero. So just think that through. We are shouldering a greater burden through our DIFF's contribution to the delivery of Northern Line. Lambeth is providing virtually zero. And so, yes, they can afford to go for, for it with a, with a different shopping list. And I also sort of, I, know, I mean, mocking foreign investment seems to be the flavor from the party opposite. And, you know, we all would like to live in a world-class city. We all always laud the Lord London's position as a world-class city. Their position seems to be, let's be a world-class city, but keep the world out. We want a world-class city, but keep the world out. Keep their money out, too. Let's make money elsewhere in the world as a country, but don't let them make money in our country. What sort of a free and open market policy is that to go for, for to, to, to shape a country's future with? Mr. Mayor, the Prime Minister of Malaysia made a, a very upbeat uh, uh, speech, and he said, I quote him, said, after three decades of silence, Batsy Power Station is coming to life. Today we see London's extraordinary capacity for reinvention. And therein lies, in fact, the message of what Nine Elms is. Until yesterday, it was shed land. Not very many jobs in those shed lands. And it was to service London's logistical needs. The logistical market has changed entirely. And there is no more need for a central London logistical base. No wonder we have to re reinvent ourselves. Somebody like Pr Premier Najib recognizes London's innate strength in being able to reinvent itself. And that is exactly what is happening in Nine Elms. And in, in that reinvention, we have always said from the very beginning on the Batsy Power Station site that what we clearly wanted was job opportunities for our local residents. More than anything else, we wanted job opportunities for our residents. And well, the, the paragraph this, this evening, Madam Mayor, actually delivers us some of those wants. We have apprenticeship programs, we have got job opportunities. 
I was really uplifted when I saw the street elite uh, performance in Wands of Common, a program run by Barclay Homes, where they take sort of up to 40 young people from various parts of London. There are four, currently four Wands of residents on their scheme. They have never worked. They have fallen out of the normal lifestyle. Some have go, drifted into crime and so on. They are brought in and through the medium of sports are taught a kind of disciplined existence for a period of six weeks. Then they are given all sorts of opportunities to use those skills. And if they pass their street elite test, they are guaranteed a six-month job with Barclay Homes. What a cracking good entry in a CV for somebody who's never worked before. There is, that is the kind of engagement and in, in, in investment Leader. the developers in, in Nine Elms are, are, are making to deepening their links with Wandsworth. Mr. Mayor, we should welcome that commitment. That we should welcome that and not mock it like the party opposite does. Thank you, uh, councillors. Paragraph 12 is for information. Is this agreed? Thank you.